What's going on to all my Succession fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again with my weekly recap, breakdown, review of the latest episode of Season 3 of Succession. We're talking Episode 6 which is titled What It Takes. An episode in which we basically see the Roy family picking the next president and there were a lot of interesting conversations that went into that decision and we're breaking it all down here in this spoiler review but before we do so, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you all are new to the channel, well welcome to the community. Consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell that way you can get the alert for when I drop new content. If you enjoyed this spoiler discussion, well, make sure to like and share the review. It helps out the channel a lot, but also appreciate the support. And in those comments, once you've seen this episode, what you think about it? Let's talk about your pros, your cons, your favorite moment, the moments that didn't work for you all. What do you think about the potential new president? Shiv getting shut down yet again. Ken doesn't know what to do. We got Tom and Greg sharing, you know, prisoner stories of what they can look like when they go to jail. Who's going to go to jail between those two characters? Let's talk about it all in the comments below. So just briefly, my, my thoughts on this episode before we break it all down. This might be a hot take, but uh, this was easily my least favorite episode of this season and one of my least favorite episodes of the show in whole. Now, there are some positives that I'm going to break down, how they came to the decision of the president. That was, you know, some interesting stuff. The last 10 to 15 minutes was very riveting, very compelling. It's the stuff that we come to love with this show. But prior to the last, like, 10 to 15 minutes, there was just a lot of, like, uninteresting dialogue it seemed like these new characters that they introduced in the show with the potential presidents they just felt so stereotypical and it might just be me let me know how you all feel about ken i love drumming strong but i feel like he has become his story and his plot has become less and less interesting as the weeks have gone on and i love ken and i love that actor but i just feel like he's kind of forgotten about so again there are some positives that i'm going to talk about here in this episode but as an episode in its entirety it wasn't really working for me, but hey, that's just me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and we'll break it all down. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna pull out some good things that I like, but overall, man, this is just just not a good episode for me. But hey. Let's get into this damn thing as we open up with Ken as he's preparing to talk to the government about, obviously, his his interview that he's going to have coming up. And it's in this conversation that he's talking to Lisa. And Lisa's letting him know, hey, Waystar isn't just turning over. They're actually being very compliant with the government. And those papers that we were looking to have as like a bombshell, this is going to be our Hail Mary type of play, those papers aren't as juicy as we initially thought. And it's, and it's in this moment that Ken has start, he's starting to realize he's losing his battle. This isn't a war he's going to win. There's going to have to be some type of miracle, some type of character we haven't met in yet. There's going to have to be some type of news break or Logan just literally croaks and dies randomly. He's going to lose this war. And I think he's starting to realize that as the pressure is on to Ken very early on. And uh, again, I love Jeremy Strong. I love the King character, but I'm just like, I just wish that they could maybe give him something other than this, him taking his father down, which is very, you know, big for the character. We know how much he idolizes his dad, but I wish there was some other plot that he had that can just give him a little bit more interesting stuff in this show, whether it's his, you know, the side piece that he's been interested in talking to, whether it's maybe getting back with his wife, maybe it's him and Stewie. I just wish there was some other plot that they can give Ken that just can give him more to do than just taking down his father. But that's just my thoughts on Ken, and we'll talk about him a little bit later, which let's talk about Ken right now as he's ignoring the messages from Greg as Greg's is like, hey man, I'm just checking in. Are you going to burn me anytime soon? Which, hey, by the end of this episode, I think Ken will not only burn Greg, he's going to burn Tom and burn whoever he can get his hands on because, again, he's he's losing this war so far. But it's in this moment, too, that we're, you know, we're on the plane with everyone and, you know, it's Shiv and Rome recognizing that that medical aid this might be their dad's new side piece, which I think it's pretty much that's the case. I think that Logan is boning this this lady and she's in his head. Another woman that's kind of getting into his ear and making maybe decisions on her own. But uh, as that, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But they're coming up with a new strategy. How are they going to pick this new president, which we'll get into that decision a little bit later. But it's in this moment here that we see Shiv continuously trying to talk to her dad about her, her advice about how they should handle this VP, vice president and, and all that stuff. And it's very very obvious that, and this has been obvious for the last couple weeks, especially in this episode, whenever Shiv's talking to her dad, it's literally like going in one ear and right out the other, and especially by the end of this episode when it comes to that family photo. But we see Shiv, she still thinks that she's on top, you know, she's still bathing and celebrating the victory last week, but I think by the end of this episode, it might just be me, but I think Shiv, she's not going to pick her dad. She's not going to pick Ken. I think she's going to go ahead and maybe get back into the politician game and maybe pick the guy that she wanted to win, and that's going to be her 
her way to take down her father because I think she is sick and tired of being ignored by her dad. But we'll talk about Shiv a little bit later. But let's go to most of this episode is spent picking the president where we go to this summit where we, you know, let's kind of survey the room briefly here. We, we get Willa, who who's, I don't know why she's still in this show uh, with Khan's girlfriend, but she's back. Doesn't really have that much to do in this episode besides having one particular joke that we'll talk about. We see that the one of the mem- uh, the family members of the Pierce family, he makes his way back to this episode. I did find it funny in regards to just surveying the room. Everyone's kind of perception of the vice president, as they mentioned, that he licks his lips a lot. It's just so funny when people, when there is a president in play, every little detail, uh, every little defect they have is highlighted, as they mentioned, that he licks lips more than LL Cool J. I thought that was kind of funny in the moment there. But speaking of kind of funny, see, Rome learns that their mom is getting remarried, which I don't know what they're going to do with their mom character. She pops in and out of the seasons. We haven't seen her this season so far, but I wonder, is there some type of angle, some power move that she's making and marrying this random guy? Let me know what you all think about this new marriage with their mom, and if we're going to be going back to London or England to see a new wedding. Let me know your thoughts on that. But we see this was a funny moment. From one potential prisoner to the next, we see, you know, Greg going to Tom and saying, hey, man, how do you handle all this pressure with this president, you know, this uh, potential going to jail conversation? He's just like, hey, keep it on top of the mind at all times. And we'll talk about their conversation at the little local Denny's that they went to, which I thought was one of my favorite moments of the episode. But it's in this moment here that I'm I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, wow, we're like 15 minutes into the episode. And I was just really kind of uninterested, you know, meeting all these kind of new characters that I felt were just so kind of stale and it just felt like it was so self-aware and kind of flat, if I'm being honest with you all. And it just felt, it felt weird. It felt like there was like the jokes just weren't landing. It just felt like we were just rolling through the motions. I don't know if it was me, like I said, the first 15 minutes and honestly, most of the episode just kind of felt very uneven and felt very unsecessionist to me if I just made up a new word there. But that's just my thoughts on the first half. But things do pick up a little bit as we get Shiv kind of being truthful with Tom as he's talking about the terrible wine that they're getting and, and you know, his future imprisonment. And Shiv's just like, you know what, Tom, I, I honestly, I'm tired of this conversation. I if It is what it is at this point, right? Which is just like a terrible thing for a wife to say to her husband, especially all the shit that Tom takes with his family. But, you know, she apologizes to him and she tries to make a move on her husband tries to sleep with him and have you know essentially makeup sex and he's just like it's pointless you're you're not you know you're not ready to have a baby so we might as well not have sex anymore so it's in that moment to me and we've talked about it for weeks that they're going to be divorced by the end of the season at least that's where the show's kind of given us so far but i feel like it's just so obvious that they have been in this relationship for their own personal gain like I think of Shiv like okay Ellie what, what would Tom get what, what would Shiv get out of Tom I think it was just as you know when she was dating or talking to her ex-boyfriend Nate in season one I want to say it was just a safe bet it's just like he has no issues he comes from a pretty good family I'm you know doing my thing with representing Gil he's just a safe bet so I think that was just like huh hey, okay you're the lucky winner you know I don't think there's going to be any foreseeable uh you know uh, issues with you and plus more importantly she can take advantage of him she's the more dominant person in the relationship and and then, of course, on the other side of the perspective, clearly Tom has a lot to gain with dating a member of the Roy family. It's almost like dating, you know, for layman terms, a Kardashian in a certain sense, right? And that's why he wants to get her pregnant, because if he goes to jail, he has leverage. So it's just in this moment to me, it's just like they don't love each other. At least I don't think they love each other. And if they did, it's probably been they've lost their love for each other. And right now it's just been beneficial for them to stay together versus getting a divorce. But that divorce is coming sooner rather than later. But kind of moving on, uh, Stephen Root, who I'm a big fan of. And, you know, speaking of HBO, I can't wait for Barry season three to come back out as a side note. But I, I can't remember if his character name was Larry or Ron. But neither here nor there, he's a very important donor. And this is where we see Connor trying to make his political moves, using his girlfriend as leverage. Like, hey, Willa, you know, maybe you can hang out with him at his little private area in his private home and show some party tricks. And and Willa's like, I don't want to hang out with this guy. I don't want to be with this guy. But it was just, again, it was very interesting to see Connor, who we'll talk about Connor in the conversation of Connor being president, which we talked about weeks ago. It was a serious conversation. And uh, man, Connor president, I couldn't imagine that happening. But more importantly, this is where the show shows all the different potential uh, president candidates 
influencing their conversation with the different Roy Flam families. Starting with Rome, we see that he's having a conversation with this character, Jared, and a very weird conversation. And, and I think, and I say weird because it was like essentially seeing Rome talking to Rome, like Roman sees himself in Jared. And I think the same can go with Jared or you know, more than likely Jared's using Rome to obviously get what he gets at the end of this episode. But I don't know, there was some weird flirtation moments with those characters that we'll talk about a little bit later in this review. But let's go to one of my favorite moments of this episode. And it is the time for Tom and Greg. This is just, I don't know what we should call them at this point. Whenever we go to Tom and Greg, we got to come up with a name with those two. Let me know your, your name for those two, because they're the best, but time for my favorite moment. As they, we see Tom calls Greg at like the booty, booty call hours late in the middle of the night. And he wants to take him to, like I said, I don't know what the name of that diner was, but it reminded me of Denny's. I don't know if you all have a Denny's out where you live, but essentially it's just a diner. It's like a very affordable place. You can eat breakfast food at any hour of the day. So he's taking him there because this is essentially their future. Uh, Greg, this is what we're going to be eating is pretty dull, uh, average food, as this is the most average food that we've ever seen any of the characters eat before. And they're, you know, they're sharing stories about what they research in prison. And again, them just talking about that stuff to me, is just so funny. But I think it's in this moment that I felt so bad for those characters, because as we see the Roy families, you know, they're dealing with bigger fish, right? They're worrying about who's the next president. Ken's worried about, you know, getting his dad out of the business, but they're worried about going to prison. They're literally the, the pawns of this whole situation, which was just so funny. But it's in the moment here that uh, Tom, I don't know, let's talk about this moment. Greg asks Tom, hey, can I unload some of my legal, illegal issues onto you? And surprisingly, Tom says, yeah, I'll go ahead and take that. I'll be that Christmas tree. You can hang your terrible ornament on my tree. But it's something that I want to bring up. Someone mentioned in the comments last week that, hey, Elliot, do you think it's possible that Tom's going to take his own life. Now, I personally think the show hasn't gotten that dark, and who knows what, what comes of that. I mean, maybe maybe Tom is like, yeah, throw it on me because I'm going to be out of here sooner rather than later. I don't know if they're going to go that route, but I, I'm just so curious on what is Tom's end game. And we'll talk about Tom, you know, with his conversation a little bit later, but what is he cooking up? What is Tom doing? Why is he accepting this burden? Why is he allowing his wife to continue to do what she does? Why is he potentially going to jail? Does Tom have a plan? Let me know in the comments, ladies and gentlemen. But back to it, as Ken has his interview with the government officials, and it's, it didn't go well. It did not go well at all, which I was surprised about because remember Ken last year in season two when he went to the in front of Congress and pretty much laid the smack down in front of them and was very confident and was helping his dad out, but he can't like help himself in the middle of that conversation. So I was very surprised that he wasn't able to win that room, but neither here nor there. Ken's losing control. He's like, you know, spewing all this stuff about the government. And he's saying a lot of stuff. They're afraid of Logan. In this episode, in every episode, we know how powerful Logan is. But in this episode, we really see that iron fist that he has on the government. And, and they're afraid of him. And they're not going to go against Logan, which is so weird. Because just weeks ago, you guys were ready to take out Logan. But either way, we see Lisa speaks her two cents and confronts Ken and say, look, you might be smarter than me, but I'm a lawyer. I'm the better lawyer. I know what I'm doing. Follow my lead. And I think it was at that moment Ken said, yep, she's out of here as we know that that's the decision that they, he ultimately comes to. But going into this little brief moment here as Vice President David, again, showing this influence of Logan, he makes his move. Again, we saw the Jared character talking to Rome. Now we're seeing David talking to the big man. He makes his move and like, hey, let's just make it happen, man. We can work together. You know, I can take care of the, you know, the situation with the FBI. Just put my name out there and let's work together on this. But, and, and obviously Logan's just kind of laughs him off. But I think it was just so pivotal in that moment to show you how powerful this man is, Logan, that literally the vice president's coming to him being like, hey, can you can you throw me a bone here? Which I, I think is kind of weird. I don't want to say it's a contradiction because where was all of this clout for Logan when he was going through his shit with the bear hug with uh, Stewie and, you know, everything with Sandy and the FBI? Like, where were all these, you know, political influencers when you were going through that? But again, it's just kind of show you that I think the show is telling us that all the stuff that Logan was going through, all the, the, the messy laundry, he's going to make his way out of that. And he still has the power. And he is still in a very influential, powerful individual that you want to be on his side. So very, very power move displayed by the show in that moment. But 
Speaking of moves and just Ken going back to his son, he's making some really bad moves again. Like I said, he decides that he's going to cut Lisa and go with this new new lawyer who I guess will figure out who that lawyer is in the weeks to come. But I, I just feel like Ken is just every single week since episode one of this season, he has made terrible decision after terrible decision. I think him cutting Lisa is just another bad decision on Ken's part. But let's go back to another political influencer by the name of Rick making his move to Shiv. Again, we saw Rome. We saw saw Logan now it's Shiv turn to get kind of mustered up by this gentleman here by the name of Rick as he's talking about listen I want to be a president. I believe he was a Democratic representative. I want to be the president, and I want you to be the next CEO of Waystar, and I'm going to do everything in my power to get your father out of that seat, even if it means getting him into prison. And I think Shiv liked those words. And again, I think by the end of this, maybe in the next couple of weeks, she's going to end up going back to being, you know, representing probably Rick and try to take him up on his offer. But again, just seeing all the different, you know, a vice president, and, and, and I don't know where Gil is. Is Gil not in the running? for presidency anymore. I guess he was embarrassed when he went to Congress and was embarrassed by Ken. So I don't know if Gil's going to play uh, a part in the season anymore, but I don't know. I think Shiv at that moment, she was like, I like what you're spitting there, Rick, and we might have to uh, work together a little bit later. But more of this funny prison talk as Greg and Tom get advice from this random guy who apparently has went to jail and he's just pretty much telling them like, you know, your toilet, it's your best friend and you need to go ahead and, and uh, take embracing your toilet because it's going to do everything for you in prison, which I thought was kind of a funny moment there. But we get this and I mentioned the Rick character, the Jared character and David, they have like this standoff where they're throwing insults at each other and, you know, Shiv jumps in and throws in her two cents in the conversation. But I'm just like, I don't watch this show for these random characters. I watch the show for the Roy family. And it just felt like this show... This episode was so focused on the presidency and these three great actors. I, I'm a fan of all those actors and, and all that stuff, but I just felt like I, I don't care about that stuff. I want to check more in with the family, but either here or, or there, I just felt like that insult of them tossing insults to each other was just kind of a, I didn't like that moment. I don't know. Let me know what you all thought of it, but more importantly, let's talk about this big moment here, and this is the family meeting. This is the moment where they're going to pick who's going to be the next president, which again, just speaks so so highly and how powerful the Roy family is, more in particularly how important and how powerful Logan is. But we see, okay, who do you like? Who do you like? So Khan, of course, he's picking himself. We see brother and sister with Rome and Shiv. They're fighting and they're going back and forth. Rome says Shiv is woke because she's picking Rick. We see Shiv saying you're racist because you're picking the Jared guy who seems to be just firing on all cylinders and will say any insult will offend anyone just to get a couple of likes and get his vote and get his name out there. Any publicity is good publicity for Jared. And then we see Tom. He's going, obviously, with Shiv at this point. And then Greg is just like, um, yeah, I, I'll just vote, I guess, like everyone else was. And he'll, he'll, he'll put in his two cents here in a second. But in the middle of all these conversations, we get this call. And we see that Ken makes his call to Tom. And this is the second time that Ken has tried to recruit Tom uh, because he's obviously done with Greg at this point. So let's talk about that secret meeting between the two characters. It's in this moment here that Ken tells Tom, hey, I can help you not go to jail. Do you want to hear more? And, and, you know, we see the conversation take place and Ken gives him his pitch about how Tom is, you know, he's a long way from home and we have this, you know, country mouse that married to hot tamale and all that stuff. And Tom, you know, laughing and, and listening to all this stuff. And, you know, we see Ken says to him, I have these new lawyers, man, and there's, they're the real deal. And I think that we can work it out a way, if you join me, that you don't have to see any jail time, which, okay, Ken, you're, 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 again, we see Ken, he can have these moments where he gives these good pitches, but I think at the end of the day, no one respects him as we get to this moment here. And, and listen, this is Tom. Tom is the one that gets shits on. Him and, and Greg gets the most crap from this entire family. The fact that Tom has this moment here to say against Ken shows you how low on a podium toll that Ken is. So we see Tom asks him, okay, Ken, how exactly is this going to work out? How are you going to save me from going to prison? And then we see Ken's rebuttal is, well, I'll get to that in a second, but my, my sister, she's going to leave you, man. You don't believe she's going to wait for you when he gets out of prison, right? And he's, you know, Ken's just trying to get in his head, but it doesn't work because Tom just pretty much brings up, listen, at this point, Ken, I've seen you F up multiple times times. You never win. I've never seen your dad, Logan, F up. He's never had a, yeah, he's had some uh, some health issues, but he's never got F with, but you are always the one getting the short in the stick. So that was Tom pretty much saying, I'm, I'm not going to go with you, man, because you, you don't seem to have your stuff worked out. 
to hear Tom say that to Ken to me was a big moment for that character and it's again just shows you how low Ken is considered to be in this family of the Roy family so we see Ken man he gets pity he gets he gets uh he gets very petty I should say very Tom petty in a way he's taking pictures with Tom just pretty much showing like this is leverage I'm going to show that you met with me so if you know I can use this if I ever wanted to very low very low Ken for you to do that in that moment but it's in that moment to me that it just shows how far from the throne Ken is that he's petty he's taking pictures of Tom meanwhile his dad and his sister and his brother they're picking the next president and he's sitting there meeting with Tom at a local diner it just shows you again how far he has fallen from the throne but wrapping up all this episode here and this was a, a very interesting moment Connor as the president question mark uh and and you know we see Logan say could it really happen and you know Shiv gives in her two cents Rome gives in his two cents and it was a conversation on the table for all about two minutes but they eventually no no it's not gonna happen but who knows what's gonna happen with uh Mr. Connor and his con heads but we see uh Greg puts in his two cents he's like hey by the way I don't think you know regardless of what I think, Connor should not be the president as he, you know, he lets everyone know that. Shiv obviously wants to vote for Rick, but we see Logan again, his power moves in this episode were pretty fantastic. He calls in the vice president, but before he calls him in, he kind of plays with him and just kind of, you know, embarrasses him about the coke and firing the, uh, the general in, in office. And again, just shows you how powerful this individual is. But through, I, I love this moment, I don't know what this symbolizes, but we see Tom coming back into the hotel and we see him walking around the hotel, seeing Greg celebrating. We see him walk into the room as the, the Roy family is meeting with the vice president. I don't know. I think, I don't know what's going on with the Tom character. Again, what is your end game, Tom? Will you, in your life, will you, is this all part of your plan? I can't wait to see what's going on with him and what he's really thinking. But we see this moment where we see, ultimately, Jared's going to end up being the one that, be, that gets picked to be the president or the potential president. But we see him meeting with Rome in the bathroom and they're going back and forth and, and talking about what they can do. And they're ultimately on the same page. But Again, I mentioned it earlier, but it, were they flirty? <laughs> Am I just imagining that? It, it felt like there was some sexual tension in the air whenever those two met each other. And again, just knowing the Rome character, he is so self-indulgent. He loves himself more than anyone else. So I think that's why he ended up picking Jerry because he sees like literally, I feel like he was a mirror in front of him. We saw two Romes in the same room at the same time. So I don't know if it is sexual the way I'm posing it, but I think he's just like, oh, I see myself in him. Or who knows, that would be wild that they end up, I don't know, kissing and having like some type of scandal going on. But again, it was some weird flirtation with those two characters. But I think it's because, again, I think Rome sees himself in that Jared character. But we see Jared makes his power move to Logan and gives him that coke uh, that he mentioned, which I think Rome told him to do that. But the time comes to the decision and they decide to go with Jared as the ultimate move. And obviously Shiv is like pissed at this moment. And again, Shiv... My dad, yet again, is not taking my advice. This is getting her closer to that door of walking out and doing something for her own. But wrapping up the episode, we get the family photo. And this is where Logan, he wants Shiv to be in the photo. She's like, no, I do not want to be in a photo with that Jared guy. I hate him. But she inevitably bends the knee and she says, I'm not going to stand next to him. And again, she's upset. You can read her body language in taking a photo. But I think more importantly, we're seeing Rome. I think out of all his children, with Ken, with Shiv, with Connor... I think Rome is, if, if if all the ships lay down and he has to pick a, 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 a sibling, a kid to take on the CEO, right now it's looking like Rome. I, I mean, out of all the stuff comes, uh, the phoenix comes uh, from the, the ashes, Rome is looking pretty good right now. And Shiv, she does not like that. And I think this is just more evidence that she will not side with her brother, Ken. She will not side with her dad. I think this is just more proof that Shiv's going to end up walking off whether it's back into politicians, whether, whether it's teaming up with another character, I think this is just evidence showing us that Siobhan will inevitably stab her dad, stab her brother Ken, stab his family, and go out on her own. If Tom's going to be on her side, we'll see. But uh, let me know what you all think of it on end of this episode again. There were some moments I enjoyed. All the stuff with Greg and Tom, the Ken moment at the restaurant, him just being so Tom Petty. Uh, but again, a lot of the the meat of the episode, those three new presidents, the Rick, the Jared, the David character, I, I don't know what it was about their the line delivery. They're all great actors, like I mentioned, but I just felt like it was just so 
uninteresting. It just didn't feel like the secession kind of quick, you know, dialogue and the riveting dialogue, the funny stuff. It just felt like a very stale episode and just one of my least favorite episodes in the show and easily the worst episode. I say worst, uh, you know, very lightly because this is the best show on television, but it was just the the worst episode of the season for me and still found some good things to say about it, but I just found this episode to be, I was kind of disattached from it from the most of it. But hey, that's my thoughts. Let me know your pros, your cons. Do you agree with me that this wasn't the best episode? Was this your favorite episode? Episode. What do you think about this Jared character being anointed as the next president? Will everyone vote for him with the influence of obviously uh, Logan's company? Who do you think Greg's going to side with? Does Greg have any plans on what is, you know, him giving this uh, burden to uh, Tom? What does that mean? And speaking of Tom, what's his end game? Let's talk about it all in the comments below. If you stuck around to this point in this video, I appreciate every single one of you all for liking these videos, sharing the videos. The comments are always incredible. So I appreciate every single one of you all. So before you leave, make sure to like, share, comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell. That way you don't miss any of my future reviews. Hope you enjoyed this review. Review. Hope you're staying safe. As you all can see on the screen now, subscribe to my channel, check out my other content, and we'll catch you all on the next video.